The Waypoint key gives the pilot access to detailed information about airports, VORs, NDBs, intersections, and up to 1,000 user-defined waypoints. A special type of user-defined waypoint known as a proximity waypoint is also accessible within this group. There are four waypoint pages which can be viewed using the large outer knob, or alternatively by pressing the waypoint key repeatedly. The first page of the waypoint group is the menu page. Here the pilot can select which one of the five waypoint categories to view. To make your selection, press the cursor key twice and use the large outer knob to highlight the desired category. Then press the enter key. Let's start by taking a look at the airport information for Daytona Beach International Airport, ICAO code Kilo Delta Alpha Bravo. Though you can search also on the city name or airport name fields, as we'll demonstrate a little later. Remember when entering data, use the small inner knob to change characters and the large outer knob to move the cursor within the highlighted field between characters. When the desired airport is displayed, press the cursor key once to remove the cursor highlight. The airport information is divided into six pages, as shown here. To move between pages, ensure the cursor highlight is hidden from view and use the large outer knob to scroll. Let's look at each of the pages more closely using the Daytona Beach Airport. The first page is the airport information page, which shows the airport identifier, city, and airport name. Using the large outer knob, we can scroll to the airport position page, which shows the airport elevation, available fuel types, coordinates, approach type, and the controlled airspace type as applicable. Scrolling once more to the right, using the outer knob, will display the airport procedures page. This page displays the non-precision approaches, SIDs, and STARS that are available for use in the navigation database. Note that the procedures are listed for informational purposes only and cannot be added to the active route from this page. To do so, you will need to select the desired procedure from the route menu. To switch between listings of available approaches, SIDs, or STARS, press the cursor key twice to activate the GPS fields, and then use a large knob to highlight the procedure type field. Next, use a small inner knob to select the desired type of procedures to display. Press the cursor key to disable the cursor highlight and enable scrolling of the selected procedures with the small knob. The fourth airport page contains airport communications information, including frequencies and sectors. Note that an RX placed next to a frequency indicates a receive only, such as ATIS. The down arrow next to the KDAB identifier indicates that more frequencies are available by scrolling down using the small inner knob. To transfer a frequency from the GPS area into the standby COM position, press the cursor key twice and then scroll to the desired frequency using the large outer knob. With the desired frequency highlighted, simply press enter to transfer to standby. The fifth page in the airport information group is a runway page which gives numbers, length, surface type, runway lighting, and ILS localizer frequencies if applicable. The arrow next to the airport identifier indicates more runway information is available using the small inner knob for scrolling. Here are the abbreviations used on the airport runway page. The final airport page contains any comments added by the user. User comments containing up to two lines of text may be added to a maximum of 250 waypoints. To add a comment, press the cursor key twice to highlight the first comment line and then use the concentric knobs to enter the text in the same way as you would enter an airport identifier. When done, press the cursor key. One more turn of a large knob will loop back to the first airport page. The four additional types of waypoints are accessed and manipulated in a similar way to the airports we just discussed. Let's look at the VOR information page. From the Waypoint menu page accessed by pressing the Waypoint key, press the cursor key twice and highlight VOR using the large outer knob, then press Enter. For this example, we'll look up information for the Ormond Beach VOR whose identifier is Oscar Mike November. Like with airports, the first VOR page gives the identification information. Rotating the large outer knob shows the VOR position information which includes the frequency, variation, coordinates, and facility type. 
A DME or TACAN node indicates the availability of distance information for appropriately equipped aircraft. Finally, if the facility broadcasts weather information, a note will also be included on the bottom line as shown here. The third and final VOR page allows users to enter two lines of comments exactly as described in the previous section covering airports. Having explored the airport and VOR waypoint information pages, the NDB and intersection pages are very similar and won't be repeated in this presentation. Comments can be added to each type of waypoint as discussed previously. Here are two sample screens showing the NDB and intersection pages respectively. Note that for intersections, the bearing and distance is shown from the nearest VOR. This is not necessarily the VOR used to define the intersection, however. Let's now take a closer look at the final type of waypoint, the user-defined waypoint. The GNC 300XL can store up to 1,000 user-defined waypoints, which can be named and commented as you like. Access to the user waypoint library is the same as with the other waypoints from the main waypoint menu page. Because our user waypoint database is empty, the system defaults to a blank user waypoint with the cursor and the identifier field. If the user waypoint library contained waypoints, you could simply enter the identifier here to recall the stored information. Let's now take a look at how to create a user-defined waypoint. Start by entering an identifier for your waypoint, which may contain up to five characters, then press the Enter key. We'll create a waypoint called ABC for our example. You will then be prompted for the method to use to specify the waypoint's location. There are three ways to define a waypoint. You can enter the position, latitude, and longitude coordinates directly. Second, you may specify a waypoint position by a bearing and distance from a known existing waypoint in the database. And third, you can enter a range and bearing from the aircraft's current position. For our example, we'll use a second method, which is the range and distance from an existing waypoint. When this option is selected, the cursor will appear in the waypoint identifier field on the bottom line. This is the reference waypoint that will be used to create the new user waypoint. For our example, we'll create a user waypoint that is 120 degrees at 15 nautical miles from the Palatka Airport. The first field is the reference waypoint field, which in our case is the Palatka Municipal Airport identifier 28 Juliet. Use the concentric knobs to enter 28 Juliet and then press the Enter key. Next, we'll enter a bearing of 120 degrees from the reference waypoint, Palatka Airport, and then press the Enter key again. Finally, we'll enter the distance of 15 miles, followed by the Enter key. Press Enter again at the OK prompt and the waypoint will be stored. Now that we've reviewed the main types of waypoints and their respective pages, let's take a brief look at the special proximity waypoint, which is found on the second page of the waypoint group. A proximity waypoint creates an alarm circle of a specified radius up to 99 nautical miles from any existing waypoint within the GNC 300 Excel database, including user-defined waypoints. Up to nine proximity waypoints can be created. A proximity waypoint is a great way to create message alerts around obstructions or other items of concern along your route of flight. Let's suppose we wish to create a proximity alert for a high antenna along our route of flight. The first step is to create a user-defined waypoint that marks the location of the antenna. Creating a user-defined waypoint was covered earlier in this presentation. In this case, we'll use a 247 degree bearing from the Deland Municipal Airport at 10.5 nautical miles. We'll name the waypoint ANT1. Next, we'll create the proximity waypoint by specifying a one nautical mile radius alarm circle around the ANT1 user-defined waypoint, as shown here. If the aircraft enters the alarm circle, a message will be triggered indicating a proximity alarm. Pressing the nav key will display the position page with the bearing and distance from the proximity waypoint. To delete a proximity waypoint, Simply highlight the waypoint in the list and press the clear key followed by enter.
The third page available from the GNC 300XL's Waypoint key is the User Waypoint List, which can be used to quickly scan, review, rename, or delete user waypoints. Note that this page group is for modifying or working with existing user-defined waypoints. To create a new user waypoint, you must use the Waypoint Page 1, as described earlier in this presentation. To delete a user waypoint, press the cursor key twice and highlight the desired waypoint to remove. Then press the clear key followed by enter. The final waypoint page group is the Waypoints with Comments page, which is an alphabetical listing of all waypoints that contain a user comment. In this unit, no comments have been added to any waypoint in the database and therefore the listing is empty. This concludes a presentation on the Waypoint and Database Information pages for the GNC 300XL.